The basic tenets of Greek astronomy and its idea about geocentrism, namely the idea that the Earth is at the centre of the solar system and the Sun revolves around it, was established by the time of Aristotle. However, the details of his system did not become standard until Claudius Ptolemy in the 2nd century AD. By the 10th century AD, texts appeared expressing doubt concerning the Ptolemaic system, but it was not until 1543, within the Christian world at least, the geocentric system was challenged by Copernicus when he published On the Revolutions of the Heavenly Spheres, where he correctly posited that the Earth and the other planets revolved around the Sun. And with the invention of the telescope in 1608, observations made by Galileo further called into question the tenets of geocentrism. Not surprisingly, the Quran adopted the earlier geocentric model on more research about the geocentric model and its influence on Islam refer to studies conducted by Professor Kwaket Jamil in Tusi and Copernicus, the Earth's motion in context, and his other study, freeing astronomy from philosophy, an aspect of Islamic influence on science. Evidence that the Quran incorrectly took the prevalent view of its time of geocentrism is found in Quran 36-38, where it suggests that the sun moves around the earth. It says, and the sun runs toward its fixed point. That is the determination of the exalted in might, the knowing. The Arabic term mustaqir, circled in red, has been translated as fixed, stopping point, dwelling place, place of rest. This is wrong as the sun does not move to a fixed point. It is stationary within the solar system in respect to the earth and the other planets whilst they move around it. However, the sun would only come to a resting point in the context of a geocentric worldview in the sense of a sunrise and sunset when viewed from Earth, because it would appear visually that the Earth is still whilst the Sun revolves around it. This is the very definition of geocentrism and was the prevalent view when the Quran was compiled. Realising this error, apologists say the verse refers to the Sun moving within the larger Milky Way galaxy. This is a futile attempt because it still does not explain what the sun's fixed point, place of rest is, in the context of the galaxy. It takes the sun approximately 230 million years to complete one journey around the galaxy's centre, and with the universe set to be expanding, eventually even the Milky Way galaxy will merge into its neighbouring galaxy Andromeda. So there is no course fixed for the sun as the Quran suggests. However, for a moment consider this. If the Quranic verse had the word sun, shams, substituted for earth, ard, then the verse would read in Arabic, wal ardu tajri li mustaqarrillaha, meaning the earth runs to its fixed point. Then the apologists will shift the goalposts and will no longer say it is referring to the Earth moving around the galaxy. Rather, they will say the Quran is scientifically accurate by claiming the verse means the Earth revolves around the Sun within the solar system. The topic of the Sun will be covered in more detail in the next video. Allah takes longer to create the earth than the entire universe. It says in Quran 41, 9-12, say, Do you indeed disbelieve in he who created the earth in two days, an attribute to him equals? 
that is the Lord of the worlds, and he placed on the earth firmly set mountains over its surface, and he blessed it, and determined therein its sustenance in four days, without distinction for of those who ask. Then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke, and said to it, and to the earth, Come willingly, or by compulsion. They said, We have come willingly, and he completed them as seven heavens within two days, and inspired in each heaven its command. And we adorned the nearest heaven with lamps and as protection. That is the determination of the exalted in might, the knowing. So the verse is saying, as explained by Muslims, although it seems like eight days in total, Allah created the earth in two days, then the mountains and its sustenance in two days. This totals four days for earth and everything within it. Then finally, the rest of the universe in two days. All this equals six days, which is confirmed in Quran 754 and other places. It is obvious, therefore, that at the time this was written, there was no modern concept of the universe, because it says Allah created the earth first and the heavens. This is obviously not scientific, as the earth did not exist before the stars and other celestial bodies. Please have a look at the link below, which puts into perspective the Earth's position in the context of the solar system, or indeed the observable universe, to realize how incorrect the Quranic account is. Another verse indicating the geocentric view of Earth is in Quran 2130, where it says, Are the disbelievers not aware that the heavens and the Earth used to be joined together, and that we ripped them apart? We made every living being out of water. Will they then not believe? Apologists say the verse refers to the Big Bang, but if that's the case, the Earth did not exist at the point of the Big Bang. It only formed as a planet that went on to sustain life several billions of years after the event, as this diagram shows. The Quranic account seems to be taken from ancient mythology, as long before Islam there was an ancient Sumerian myth known as Gilgamesh and another world, which is a mythological prologue that assumes that once, a long time ago, the heavens and the earth were united, only later to be split apart. The link to the journal is in the description. The final section of the verse says, Every living thing was created from water. Muslims believe in spirits called jinns. They believe them to be living beings as they were for Solomon in Quran 34.12. Quran 27.17, jinns fought for him in his army. But the Quran says they were made from fire in 55.15. Although the Muslims of today link this verse with every living being on earth being created from water, or requires water to survive, or is made up of some constituent of water within their biology, ancient Egyptian creation myths dating back as far as 2780 BC held that the world and all its life forms were arisen out of the waters of chaos. Hindu creation narratives also describe a primordial sea from which all life came into existence. The link in the description explains the origins of living beings from primordial waters amongst many ancient religions long before Islam. Angels are made from light according to the following hadith, which according to Islamic literature are the third group of living beings created by Allah alongside humans and jinns. For example, in Sahih Muslim 2996, Aisha reported that Allah's Messenger said, The angels were born out of light, and the jinns were born out of the spark of fire, and Adam was born, as he has been defined in the Quran for you, i.e., he is fashioned out of clay. Indeed, Quran 1526 and other verses does say humans were created from clay or mud. The Quran implies that the earth is flat. It says in Quran 91.6, the earth and the one who spread it. In Tafsir al-Tabari, by the early Quran commentator Ibn Jarir al-Tabari explains the word Tahaha circled above. 
to mean basataha, which means spreads it. Quran 7930 uses a similar wording, but this time instead of tahaha, it says dahaha, which means exactly the same thing. For example, it says in the translation, as for the earth, he spread it, dahaha. Qatada ibn Diyama, an early Quran exegete, says dahaha means basataha, i.e. spreads it. Another early scholar, Abu Hamza, says dahaha means basataha. So does Asuddi, who says dahaha means basataha. Also Sufyan says dahaha means basataha. Atabari goes on to explain dahaha comes from dahu to mean spread. By citing later dictionaries or lexicons to fit with Quranic discrepancies and in an attempt to fit it with the contemporary worldview and modern science, today's apologists say that dahaha from Quran 7930 means spherical or round shape, like an egg, specifically an ostrich's egg. Concluding the earth is egg-shaped and therefore in conformity with modern science. Although this is incorrect because an egg, if stood up vertically, is stretched at the end of its poles, whereas the earth is more compressed at the end of its poles. If the egg is placed horizontally, as pictured here, its shape is approximated to being oval, oblate, ellipsoidal, whereas in contrast, the earth is more spherical in shape. Here is an ostrich egg, and next to it is the most widely used photograph of Earth, the blue marble, taken from space in 1972. Although the word dahaha is a futile attempt in equating it with an ostrich egg by some, please view the link in the description from an Islamic channel refuting the claim that dahaha ever meant an ostrich's egg, thus exposing the insincerity of those who claim to try and fit the Quran with modern science. In fact, the opposite is true. The Quran describes the earth as a bed, Firasha, in 2.22. Beds are flat and smooth that allow people to lie on. The Quran makes further descriptions of the earth by calling it a cradle, Mihada, in 78.6. In Quran 15.19, as extended out, madad. Quran 71.19 calls the earth a carpet, bisata. The word comes from the Arabic mabsut, which means flat or level. That is why bisata is also a carpet because it lays flat on the ground. Quran 88.20 says it is spread out flat, sutihat. None of these indicate the earth is spherical, rather the opposite is true. In fact, Quran 13.41 says the earth has edges at Raf and that it is being reduced. Actually, from his reading of the Quran, as recent as 2015, Saudi cleric Sheikh Bandar al khaybari speaking at a university lecture in the UAE, said the earth is flat and it does not rotate the sun. Here is a clip. Awalan. نحن الآن في أين؟ نذهب إلى مطار الشارقة نريد أن نذهب إلى الصين بالطيارة واضح؟ ركزوا معي هذه الأرض إذا قلتم أنها تدور إذا خرجنا من مطار الشارقة برحلة دولية إلى الصين الأرض تدور صح؟ طيب لو وقفت الطائرة في السماء أليست الصين تأتي؟ صح ولا لا؟ تدور تأتي الصين ولا ما تأتي؟ طيب لو كانت الشمس الأرض تدور هكذا لو تمشي الطيارة ما أدري كم تمشي لن تستطيع أن تلحق الصين لأن الصين تدور وأنت تدور فلن تستطيع أن تصل إلى الصين لأنك تدور وهي تدور فكيف تصل إلى الصين؟ To illustrate how outdated the Sheikh is, someone who gets his knowledge from the Quran and Muhammad, consider the comments of Professor Dr. Chris Smith from Cambridge University and founder of the Naked Scientist Radio Show podcast and website who won the 2008 Royal Society's prestigious Cone Award for bringing science to a wider audience, says in an article in answer to the question, does Earth's rotation affect light times? He says that the atmosphere is moving with the surface of the Earth below it because there is friction. 
so the plane will continue to move with the surface of the Earth, as there is no difference flying with the rotation of the Earth. The full article is in the description. So in conclusion, ancient geocentrism within Islam suggests that the sun moves around the Earth, that the heaven and Earth were once together, then split apart, and all living things are created from water. All these non-scientific ideas are found within ancient mythologies long before Islam ever existed. Time and time again, the Quran implies the earth is flat by calling it a bed, carpet, spread out, etc. Modern apologists have suggested the word dahaha means ostrich egg-shaped, but this is not true either linguistically or scientifically. The Quran says Allah created the earth first in two days, its content in another two days, then the rest of the universe in two days, totaling six days for the whole of creation, heaven and earth. This mistake can only occur because in 7th century Arabia, the stars, sun and moon were simply thought to be lights or small objects that moved around in the lowest of seven heavens just above the earth. For them it seemed natural that the earth would take more time for its creation than the heavens. Modern Islamic scholars have been on record stating the earth does not revolve around the sun. If Quranic verses are scientifically accurate, as today's Muslims assert that they are, then why are the scientific discoveries not made by Muslims first? Instead, they are first made by non-Muslims who never reference the Quran for their discovery or ever rely on it. Then once validated and confirmed by the world, Muslims find an obscure, unrelated or even a verse that says the opposite, they fit it in with modern discoveries. This shows the disingenuousness of the apologists and how the Quranic texts lack a clear and precise meaning. Instead, due to its fluidity and fickleness, it can be distorted and manipulated to the whims of the apologists to say what it wants it to say in order to conform with the audience they are talking to or in conformity with the modern worldview. Thank you.